This is the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. This is the lesson for Sunday, June 26, 2022. Subject, Christian Science. Golden Text. Jeremiah Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for Thou art my praise. Responsive Reading Psalm Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all, by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. The Bible Psalm Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving-kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. 2 Kings In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Isaiah 
Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. John There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, His servants met him, and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed, and his whole house. Matthew And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid, and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose, and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. John. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for ever. Even the Spirit of Truth, 
whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Revelation And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The physical healing of Christian science results now, as in Jesus' time, from the operation of divine principle, before which sin and disease lose their reality in human consciousness and disappear as naturally and as necessarily as darkness gives place to light and sin to reformation. Now, as then, these mighty works are not supernatural, but supremely natural. They are the sign of Emmanuel, or God with us, a divine influence ever present in human consciousness, and repeating itself, coming now, as was promised aforetime to preach deliverance to the captives of sense and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. From beginning to end, the scriptures are full of accounts of the triumph of spirit, mind, over matter. Moses proved the power of mind by what men called miracles. So did Joshua, Elijah, and Elisha. The decisions by vote of church councils as to what should and should not be considered holy writ, the manifest mistakes in the ancient versions, the 30,000 different readings in the Old Testament, and the 300,000 in the New, these facts show how a mortal and material sense stole into the divine record, with its own hue darkening to some extent the inspired pages. 
but mistakes could neither wholly obscure the divine science of the scriptures, seen from Genesis to Revelation, mar the demonstration of Jesus, nor annul the healing by the prophets, who foresaw that the stone which the builders rejected would become the head of the corner. In the year 1866, I discovered the Christ science or divine laws of life, truth, and love, and named my discovery Christian Science. God had been graciously preparing me during many years for the reception of this final revelation of the absolute divine principle of scientific mental healing. For three years after my discovery, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing, searched the scriptures and read little else, kept aloof from society, and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. I knew the principle of all harmonious mind action to be God, and that cures were produced in primitive Christian healing by holy, uplifting faith. But I must know the science of this healing, and I won my way to absolute conclusions through divine revelation, reason, and demonstration. St. John writes in the 10th chapter of his book of Revelation, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. This angel had in his hand a little book, open for all to read and understand. Did this same book contain the revelation of divine science, the right foot or dominant power of which was upon the sea, upon elementary, latent error, the source of all error's visible forms. The angel's left foot was upon the earth, that is, a secondary power was exercised upon visible error and audible sin, the still small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound. The inaudible voice of truth is to the human mind as when a lion roareth. It is heard in the desert and in dark places of fear. It arouses the seven thunders of evil and stirs their latent forces to utter the full diapason of secret tones. Then is the power of truth demonstrated, made manifest in the destruction of error. Then will a voice from harmony cry, Go! and take the little book. Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Mortals, obey the heavenly evangel. Take divine science. Read this book from beginning to end. 
study it, ponder it. It will be indeed sweet at its first taste when it heals you. But murmur not over truth if you find its digestion bitter. Today, the healing power of truth is widely demonstrated as an imminent eternal science instead of a phenomenal exhibition. Its appearing is the coming anew of the gospel of on earth peace, good will toward men. This coming, as was promised by the Master, is for its establishment as a permanent dispensation among men. But the mission of Christian science now, as in the time of its earlier demonstration, is not primarily one of physical healing. Now, as then, signs and wonders are wrought in the metaphysical healing of physical disease. But these signs are only to demonstrate its divine origin, to attest the reality of the higher mission of the Christ power to take away the sins of the world. Truth's immortal idea is sweeping down the centuries, gathering beneath its wings the sick and sinning. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself, when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The promises will be fulfilled. The time for the reappearing of the divine healing is throughout all time. And whosoever layeth his earthly all on the altar of divine science, drinketh of Christ's cup now, and is endued with the spirit and power of Christian healing. In the words of St. John, He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for ever. This comforter, I understand to be divine science. I will now read the three daily duties as given in the Church Manual by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this Church to pray each day. Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me, and rule out of me all sin, and may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A Rule for Motives and Acts Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, 
influencing or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to duty. It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged, and justified, or condemned. And from science and health, Christian scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you either when asleep or when awake. This Bible lesson is prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, 1910 edition, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.